Hello from Dendrite Digital in Anaheim, makers of the Virtue Data Processor, and Zipbits, the website that shows you how to use JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So I have a new setup that allows me to record the output of my PC on the screen of a Mac, recorded on the Mac, and uh, hopefully this is going to work. So, what I wanted to show was uh, my setup here in in Bovado, and I've uh, linked the uh, compile or the text editor uh, Atom, so it's my um, HDL Verilog system, and let's see, there's the code, and they always pop up all these other windows, okay fine, but all I really want is my text editing. So, um, as you probably know, uh, the VGA uh, pixel clock is not the same as the FPGA's uh, frequency. It's just a little off uh, if you multiply it down to four. So, um, for every four clock cycles of 100 megahertz it's roughly 25 megahertz so you could do it that way which I've seen it done before but uh, the pixel clock for VGA is actually 25.175 so if you multiplied it by 4 it's off by 0.7 megahertz and although it doesn't seem like much, um, on some older cathode ray tube type uh, video systems, it could potentially uh, um, cause some problems. Uh, like if you had this at, uh, in some sort of trade show or something and left it on overnight, uh, the next day you might come in and see your monitor is smoking at the at the at the seams so um, I was gonna show you how to make a uh, a different clock so this is my code for VGA and currently it's uh, 64 bits uh, 64 bit byte <laughs> and uh, um, I divided into eight pieces of uh, eight eight bits each, and uh, run it through this system, and uh, that that frees up the bus uh, quite substantially. Instead of every every uh, um, twenty five megahertz, you're updating the pixels. You do it once every what? Uh, 32 clock cycles so uh, allows me a little more room for doing other things and uh, so what we're gonna focus on here is this VGA clock VGA clock now this input clock is uh, 100 megahertz exactly uh, and to get that 0.7 um, I use the uh, I use the uh, VGA clock here, and, and the way you find that guy is uh, he's located in the IP catalog. So if you open up the IP catalog and you go to the clock wizard.
There he is. And uh, you click on this guy. It's the same as if you click on this guy up here, but I've already got him made. So um, you find the clock wizard by going to the IP uh, catalog and type in clock and scroll down until you see this clocking wizard. And then you click on that guy. Dun, 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 dun. There it is. So uh, I've already uh, trimmed uh, some of the some of the other. Uh, see if we show uh, all the ports. Uh, it's a big mess of all kinds of stuff that I don't know how to use yet. But uh, we're going to use an MMCM, and uh, we're going to make sure that everything is correct down here. I have a hundred megahertz clock exactly as an input clock in and uh, you can put uh, your name up here and uh, name of your your uh, interface and uh, and then we go to output clocks and you can see uh, that it's got a number here so uh, if you don't use this exactly right. Let's say uh, you wanted it just uh, 100.7 and you hit the tab key and it buzzes for a while, accesses the hard drive, goes, wait a minute, warning, the requested frequency value for clock out one cannot be achieved. Please change your, yeah. See, it's particular. You got to have it exactly right. Otherwise, uh, you'll you'll fail timing for sure. So you got to put in the number it suggests. Seven five. Uh, yeah. There we go. So let's try that. Hit the tab key, and the red goes away. What do you know? So there we go, and then um, we, uh, I don't like to have uh, normally when you when you uh, start this up these two check boxes down here. These two check boxes will be on, and uh, don't know how to use those either, so might as well not have them. And they'll complicate your interface too. You'll you'll have to plug these into something. And if you don't have them, it's just a simple in-out process. Come in, you, you get the clocks in, you get the clocks out. At least according to uh, what you have uh, here. That's close enough, much closer than just 100 megahertz. <laughs> Not going to fry your monitor with the uh, 0 0.0 zero one seven five difference <laughs> and uh, let me think so everything looked good and then port renaming I wouldn't bother renaming the ports and uh, this all does its thing summary and uh, of course you can have other clocks going at other clock rates so you can get all your your externals all timed correctly um, but be careful when you're going between clock domains you need to have like a FIFO or a, a first in first out stack or something like that but we're gonna keep it simple we're gonna stick with one clock and uh, we're gonna divide this down into 25.175 for the pixel frequency you just put a put a counter and have a tick we hit OK and we you know I've tried global see if you hit, if you poke the global button and you try apply it's gonna hum around for a second or two and then and then uh, I was going to say, oops, 
clock domain might not work. It liked it. What do you know? Or did it? Global clock. It's working on it. Let's see what it does. Looks like it worked. So, global clock domain. And here we go. Generation of output products completed successfully. What do you know? And uh, that's how you make a MMCM. And it's very similar to the PLL phase lock loop. So, um, and then, uh, then we can just go ahead and see, I, I've tested this Verilog code pretty extensively and it should work. And maybe I'll show that all over again. So this is with uh, 64 bits instead of 32 bits like I did last time. So, uh, we'll give it a try. Here it is, 640 by 480, uh, 8 bits per pixel, uh, 256 colors, and it uh, it's able to do, uh, you know, since 640 pixels is not divisible evenly by 256, but it is by 128, that's 5 times 128, count the bars, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of the same color. That's 128 times 5 is 640, I think. <laughs> and so uh, it alternates one line after another between uh, 128 different pixels different. And so it does 128 on one thing and from and 256 on the next, and then it goes back to 128. And so it it oscillates between the two things and that's why you get the five bars is because 640 is divisible by 128 not 256